Hey guys, this is James at the Gig Harbor Fly Shop. Uh, we're down here today, we're gonna give you a little brief uh, chum seminar uh, about fishing for chum salmon here in the area. Uh, chum are big, hard fighting fish. They're probably the least desirable of salmon for keeping to eat, but um, if they're bright, you know, some people like them for the smoker, but big, hard fighting fish. And for a lot of guys, it's their first opportunity to get a, a salmon on the fly rod. So we're gonna go over some stuff to uh, get you in the game for fishing for these brutes. All right, so first off, rod and reel for chum fishing. Um, you're gonna want an eight weight or better for the most part. Um, some guys get away with fishing for them with the seven weight, but you hook into a bigger fish, 10, 12 plus pounds, um, having an eight weight and some backbone to be able to turn that fish is gonna be to your advantage. Um, right here, I've got the Scott nine foot Radian, uh, eight weight, fast action rod, great rod for casting this stuff, um, being able to get your line out there and has plenty of backbone to turn that fish. Um, for a reel, not super critical, However, you do want to make sure that you have a good drag system in your reel because these fish are strong and capable of taking some line on you. So just a Nautilus FWX 7.8 right here, um, be perfect for, for this scenario. Um, any reel that's, that's set up for an 8 weight, it's going to be just fine as long as you have that drag system. So lines for fishing for chum. Um, going to be similar to what you do your other beach fishing for salmon with. Um, here I have a 40 plus and a Rio outbound short. Um, both these in eight weight. These are both intermediates. Um, you pretty much want to go with either an intermediate or a full floater for chum. Um, they're going to be in shallow water, uh, not running very deep. So any more than that, and you're going to be end up hanging up on bottom a lot. So you don't need the big heavy sink tips, um, intermediate vest, and a floater is oftentimes the most appropriate. If you're fishing out of a boat and you're fishing them in slightly deeper water, probably want to go with the intermediate. But if you're fishing from shore, the floater is going to be just fine. If you do feel that you need to get a little bit deeper, you can always grab an airflow poly leader and an intermediate and loop that on the end of your fly line. But two good lines here, shooting headlines so you can get that distance. Not super critical, but um, you know, if the pod is, is a certain certain distance away and you want to be able to get out there having the shooting head will help. All right, some leaders for fishing for chum salmon. Here I have a Rio salmon and steelhead leaders in both a nine foot and a six foot tapering down to 12 pound test in the tippet. Um, 10 pound test is probably about the minimum you're going to want to go with, with uh, 12 pound or 16 pound pretty much ideal because these are big strong fish. Um, Difference in between using a nine foot or a six foot. Um, nine foot's gonna be appropriate for if there's a fair amount of fish around but not a ton and you're casting longer distances and you're getting fish that are actually chasing it. Um, if the fish are highly concentrated, uh, you're probably gonna wanna go with the shorter leader to reduce the chances of foul hooking these fish. So as I mentioned with the leaders, for tippet strength, pretty much gonna wanna go with 12 pound and up. 12 or 16 pound tests, real salmon and steelhead tippet, cover all your bases right there. So one last component that's uh, pretty critical when you're doing any kind of Puget Sound beach fishing uh, is to have a stripping basket. Here we have Line Curves hard molded plastic stripping basket. We really like this one. Um, it's got a big area for dropping your line into. Uh, we also like that it's got the notches on the side so you can set your rod down here while you're re-rigging. Um, other options on stripping baskets, uh, William Joseph makes a collapsible mesh stripping basket and Sea Level has a new line of stripping baskets out that are actually soft foam um, but retain a larger shape, um, but are a little bit more collapsible and a little bit more maneuverable. So we're going to talk about some flies to use for chum. Um, chum really seem to like chartreuse, but uh, cerise colors, purples, and oranges also tend to work if chartreuse isn't really doing it. Um, first one I've got here is the Sea Run Chummer. It's similar to the Sea Run Bugger. Uh, that's a popular cutthroat fly, but it's in chartreuse and tied on a slightly larger hook. This is another lo nice little pattern in chartreuse. This is the, uh, the sparkle shrimp right here. Um, we also have this one available in a pink color, or cerise and pink style color. This one here is the Chum Comet. Uh, looks an awful lot like the Sea Run Chummer. Pretty similar, it's got a little bit different ribbing for the body there. Um, again, they really do like chartreuse. We have three of our favorites for chum. Uh, this is all basically the same pattern, just tied in different colors. Um, the first one we've got here is the Kibbles and Bits in Chartreuse. The uh, orange one in the middle there is the Scooby Snacks. And the uh, last one there is the Puppy Chow in purple. Um, we have all these flies available in the shop. Um, also, we have all the materials in the shop, so if you're interested in tying your own, just stop by and we can get you the recipe and get you the right materials. So most of the places that we fish for chum and the salt are at the terminal estuaries near the mouth of the river that they're going to be spawning in. Um, frequently this is going to be over real shallow water, you know, over a flat. Um, 
So it's not super technical fishing. And generally there's a lot of them around, their presence is known. So you're gonna be casting towards cruising fish or mill, fish that are milling about. Uh, the basic, basic technique is gonna to be to cast out near the fish. You wanna avoid casting directly into the middle of the school because you don't wanna spook them. You wanna to try to cast to the edges, anticipate which way, which direction they're traveling, get out in front of them, and then um, just, just get a little motion on the fly and hopefully you draw one of their attentions and you'll, you'll end up getting one to, to peel off and bite. So I'm just gonna walk through real quick uh, just your basic uh, techniques for fishing for chum. So we're going to go through the basics for fishing for chum in an estuary setting again. Here I'm using a floating line because I'm fishing over very shallow water so I don't really have a need to get very deep. These fish are going to be cruising in this shallow water. Essentially what you want to do is attempt to visually locate the school and determine which direction that they're moving. When you see the fish, figure out which way they're moving. Ideally, you're going to want to try to put your cast out just in front of the pot of fish so as not to spook them. If you lay it down right in the middle of them, pretty high likelihood that you could spook them. Get your cast out there, hopefully get in front of them. You're going to want to drop the rod tip so that you keep all the slack out of the line and then your retrieve is going to be pretty simple. Usually just a couple of short quick strips and then I like to follow that up with a longer and slower pull. Um, if you strip too fast with these fish, the likelihood of foul hooking them really goes up. So usually a couple short quick strips, try to get them, get them paying attention to it and then a long slow pull. Um, they'll often take it on that long slow pull. Again, the idea, because they're not feeding, is to get it just close to them so that you're not spooking them. Um, and then really, it's an aggravation strike. You're gonna try to irritate the fish to the point to the, they're, that they're gonna wanna take the fly. So again, we're just gonna cast it out, lay it down, drop the rod tip to keep the slack out of the line, couple of slow, slow pulls, switch it up, couple of quick strips, um, just varied motion, trying to make the fly look alive and make it look like something that's going to irritate those chum and taking a swipe at it.